live. No wait weather and traffic on CW 39 Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the first Friday of the new year. How you feeling? Hey. Hey. That sounds good. Hey. Oh, hey, I just, you know, it's good. Yeah. We made it five days. Yeah. It's a beautiful, not beautiful day, <laughs> but it's okay. It's Friday, but we have some, one, not two, not three, but did you say 12? Yeah, we have 12 through accidents that we're tracking here at 530. Oh. So an early start to the morning. Thankfully, none of them are very, very impactful, like the accidents that we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. You can still get around all these, but it's going to be a stressful drive this morning. That's the best way I can put it, between the rain wow. and getting held up now and then with those accidents. It's just going to be a stressful drive. OMG, 12. Wow. Um, what are you going to say? I mean, there were 12 days of Christmas. There's 12 accidents on a Friday. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about that because this rain is, as we saw, very impactful today. Yeah. yeah, heavy downpours right now. And for the next couple of hours, it's going to be wet by midday and certainly by the afternoon. It'll be like a totally different scene out there. We'll actually get some sunshine by the end of the day. But this widespread round of rain's coming through where you see those orange and red colors is where the rain is heaviest. So the bulk of it, the, the heaviest stuff is just reaching Houston right now. We've got another hour where that's going to be the case. You can see farther south, there's a little cluster of lightning south of Houston where the rain is even heavier, and that was to be expected this morning. It was going to likely be areas south of I-10, south of Houston, where the heaviest rain fell. But again, we're looking at it coming through right now. There's not much you can do about it. If you got to head out in the next hour, you're just going to be in it for sure. Now, that rain will start to uh, let up a little bit by mid-morning, and then by late morning, midday, it's pretty much done. And by the afternoon, we'll get, like I said, some sunshine popping up. Temperature-wise, not like it's that cold. We're in the 50s now. We'll top out close to 60 by this afternoon. We've got a nice weekend ahead and another round of rain Monday. We'll get to those details coming up soon. Here's a look at 610 North Loop at Ella Boulevard where we have the westbound lanes moving slow because of an accident that has occurred. Also expect to see lots of uh, wet roadways here on our Houston Transtar cameras throughout the morning. Pulling up our traffic map now, we have several spots that are moving slow already and we haven't even gotten to the bulk of the morning commute just yet. But check out the southwest side of town. Several accidents impacting this location. We'll go over each of these coming up in a bit. All right, thank you so much. Well, Harris County deputies urging a father to turn himself in after they say he pulled out a high-powered rifle on his own son and an off-duty officer. Precinct 3 tells us it happened at a home in the 13,000 block of the open Holly Lane. This is all near Westlake Houston Parkway, and it was around 1020 when it took place. We're told the father and his teenage son got into some type of argument. In the midst of their argument, an off-duty deputy came home and saw the man firing a weapon at his son several times. The officer commanded him to drop his gun and also fired her weapon. The father returned fire left the scene in a vehicle. He, he needs to turn himself in. He knows who he is uh, right now. We don't want to give his name uh, for the integrity of the uh, the investigation. It's still ongoing. Uh, we're working in, uh, closely with the Umbel ISD Police Department. So at this time, we don't want to uh, say who, who he is. But he knows who he is, and he just needs to contact us so we can get his side of the story. The district attorney's office has already been contacted. Charges are pending and no one was harmed during this shooting. A Spring ISD janitor is accused of putting a hidden camera in an employee bathroom at Hoyland Elementary. An employee found it and alerted police. The district says it fired janitor Eric Carrion, but would not release his mugshot, even though you did see him in probable cause court because it's an ongoing investigation. Meanwhile, an update to a story we brought to you that made national headlines. The man who killed a robber in this video at a Southwest Houston taqueria says he opened fire to protect his best friend's son. The shooter's attorney reveals the shooter said he would not have been able to face his friend if something had happened to that boy. This week, a grand jury decided not to charge the shooter who has asked to remain anonymous because he is in fear for his own safety. The robber, Eric Washington, was killed. Police said the gun he used during the robbery was fake. At least we're talking about the robber's gun. Repairs are underway in Galveston this morning after this huge sinkhole opened up right in the middle of a street. This is 51st Street. It has been closed from Broadway to Avenue K because they have to make repairs in order for it to open again.
All right, now the big story this morning is that weather forecast, and we're talking about more on where the rain is right now and where is it going. Yeah, it's everywhere right now. It's going east, and eventually give it, you know, three, four, five hours, and a lot of this will be out of here, but this is not going to make for a fun morning drive, especially the earliest part of the morning drive. Let's look farther north, and again, you can see the rain is widespread. There's Conroe, there's Cleveland. Here we go into Houston. We've got a heavy batch that's just about to sweep on through. It's over the west side right now, and the west loop, or west belt, way at least and then entering into the loop soon and then also down to the south is where we see some of the heaviest rain in our area with a pretty good cluster of lightning off to the south as well that's going to be heading right into Galveston and the Gulf Freeway eventually so lots to watch this morning now as we look farther west notice how the rain is not as heavy and it's kind of breaking up you get towards Austin the rain is pretty much wrapped up so that type of scene that we see out west there will be here in a couple of hours let me walk you through it on future cast here's a look at eight o'clock this morning now so again that heaviest rain is just pushing east of most of I-45 by about 8 o'clock this morning. As we go a little later into 10 a.m., you can see the rain continuing to move out of here. Might be a few showers lingering, minor ones, if anything, around Houston at this time. But gradually, everything's going east. By noon, rain should be done. Clouds still holding over the I-45 corridor. Clearing already taking place to the west with some late-day sunshine expected around here. Now, as we go through the night, things are quiet and clear, but notice we have potential for some fog taking shape Saturday morning. Otherwise, should be a mostly sunny afternoon and probably another the round of fog we think on Sunday morning as well. Temperatures right now mild. We're in the 50s, even some 60s down farther south of Houston. Highs today. It'll be a little warmer west where we get sunshine earlier and colder to the east. Houston kind of in between all that. We're expecting highs upper 50s to near 60 degrees today. So not a real big blast of cold air with this at all. It's just a lot of rain. It will turn chilly the next couple of mornings though as we get down to the low 40s. 61 for Saturday and Sunday, so not bad at all for the weekend, especially the afternoons looking good. Here's our next storm system, and again, this one will bring widespread rain and storms on Monday, and a windy cold front follows, bringing cold air on Tuesday. watching our roadways closely this morning as it is a very busy start to the drives um, uh, all throughout town. We have uh, some sort of accident. No matter if you're on the north loop, uh, 69 and East Tags, we have something there. We have uh, accidents developing along Southwest Freeway. So let's start on the southwest side of town and go over some of these accidents that have been reported here today along Southwest Freeway traveling inbound. There's a crash on Bel Air Boulevard at Southwest Freeway and then along Highway 90, a crash on Main Street at Hillcross and on 288, your right hand shoulder remains blocked because of a crash southbound just before Airport Boulevard. Now let's go back to the north side of town now and talk about some of these accidents that are causing for some impacts today. Two lanes are blocked and your right hand shoulder is blocked because of a crash on I-10 eastbound at Lockwood Drive. We have an incident right outside of Hardy Toll Road and 610 Kelly Street at Loop Freeway. And we have one more accident. This one quite impactful for folks. Two lanes remain blocked and your left hand shoulder blocked because of a crash on 610 westbound after Ella Boulevard. And this is what it looks like now. Well, look at that. It looks like it cleared up already for us just in the past few minutes. You're watching CW 39 Houston. No wait, weather and traffic. The truth revealed. We found 63 text messages between you and another man. I'm done. I'm done. Weekdays at 12 on CW 39 Houston. We are all part of our journey driven by our passion. I want to help people when they're hurt. Our purpose. I want to protect others when they need it most. Our progress. I inspire others to find their true value. What the world needs now is much different than yesterday. And Willie Pals is making that difference. We pride ourselves in adding value to the lives of our clients and get you the justice that you're entitled to. Your world doesn't have to stop because of an injury. Win with Willie Pals. If you really think about it, there's only one way to save money on luxury carpet or flooring. Buy direct. No middlemen. If you can do that and get the best flooring and a great installation, then you save money. That's what National Floors Direct is all about. At National Floors Direct, we offer next day installation of luxury carpet and flooring and we'll beat anyone's price by 15% or it's free. Call 888-400-FLOOR. I bought direct and that feels great. Call 888-400-FLOOR. We'll bring the store to your door. Ah, the sweet sound of savings. With Reliance Flex Your Credit's electricity plan, you automatically get your two highest use days free every week. Up to eight days a month. And guess what else? 
You also get bill credits to redeem right in the Reliant app. To save with Flextra credits, call 1-866-RELIANT. Reliant. That's power. Your way. Hi, I'm Lee Trevino. Most people know me for winning six PGA championships. With my bum knee, I started thinking I was going to have to trade my club in for a cane. Then I discovered arthritis knee pain centers. Arthritis Knee Pain Centers has cutting-edge, image-guided treatments that place a natural lubricating gel directly into your affected joints. This FDA-approved, non-surgical procedure replenishes the missing cushioning fluid to provide you with pain relief, comfort, and improved mobility without surgery or downtime. It's covered by Medicare and most private insurance. We've helped relieve the pain for thousands of our patients. Arthritis Knee Pain Centers relieve my pain and change my life. They got me back in the game again, baby. Call them now and schedule your free knee pain assessment. Get the pain relief you deserve today. With four locations in Houston, call 800-925-6863. That's 800-925-6863. Geek out with Young Sheldon. Watching Cosmos while we're eating dinner? Am I awake because this feels like a dream? Weeknights at 5 and 5.30 on CW39 Houston. Welcome back, everyone. We have an update on an attack in the Middle East by suicide bombers that killed at least 84 people. Investigators now believe the bombers likely carried out the attack on the commemoration for an Iranian general killed in a 2020 U.S. drone strike. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack. Officials are still investigating this incident. U.S. officials are concerned that the conflict in Gaza could spread throughout the region. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is traveling to the Middle East again to make sure progress is made on that front. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Basil John reports on the ongoing conflict. As Israel continues its efforts to crush Hamas, the Biden administration is doing everything it can to prevent a region-wide war from breaking out. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is headed to the Middle East as he is focused on easing fears that the Israel-Hamas war could erupt outside of Gaza. It is in no one's interest, not Israel's, not the region's, not the world's, for this conflict to spread beyond Gaza. This is Blinken's fourth time traveling to the region in three months. Earlier in the week, a senior Hamas leader was killed by an alleged Israeli strike in Lebanon. He needs, believes we need to make progress on continuing to try to keep the, the, the conflict from escalating, which is why um, he's returning to the region. With international criticism of Israel's operations in Gaza on the rise and recent explosions in other areas in the Middle East, the State Department says this is a job for the U.S. The secretary believes it is the responsibility of the United States of America to lead diplomatic efforts to tackle those challenges. Blinken is arriving a day after a U.S. strike in Baghdad killed the commander of the Iranian-backed militia. Obviously, we want to prevent the conflict from spreading, but part of that means that people need to stop taking strikes against our soldiers. However, there are growing calls for a ceasefire on Capitol Hill. There have been too many civilian casualties. We have to bring this war to an end. The State Department says that Blinken is also focused on increasing humanitarian aid to the people in Gaza, as well as an effort to curb violence against Palestinians in the West Bank. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. All right, thank you so much, Basil. And now to this, you're watching new video from the earthquake in Japan. It killed at least 84 people. A resident surveying the damage in the region says no houses collapsed, but the damage you're seeing here is actually along the port area, which they're still assessing. Well, the first critical contest in the 2024 presidential race is less than two weeks away. The Republican candidates are fighting to win over Iowa voters, with Donald Trump still far ahead in the polls. Meanwhile, other candidates are making a last-minute push to show that they can compete. Our Washington, D.C. correspondent Hannah Brand tells us about the state of the race. Iowa is gearing up for caucus day, where Republican candidates will face their first test. So I'm asking you for your support. I'm looking forward to January 15th. Polls show former President Donald Trump with a commanding lead, but the other Republican candidates aren't done making their case to voters, with former Governor Nikki Haley arguing her campaign is gaining momentum. President Trump's given me some attention these days. I'm kind of flattered. 
I'm flattered because I know he sees what we're seeing, and that means we're surging, and he is getting uncomfortable. Governor Ron DeSantis is going after both Trump and Haley. Donald Trump is running for his issues. Nikki Haley is running for her donors' issues. I'm running for your issues. This week, the Trump team has surrogates in Iowa rallying support. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem told voters there's a reason she wants to help reelect the former president. President Trump doesn't think he's better than anybody. He knows who he is. He's confident in who he is. The Iowa caucuses will kick off the sprint through primary season, which will quickly narrow down the Republican fields. Don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't play in this primary. It matters. And the candidates say whoever wins the Republican nomination will shape the nation's political future. And it's going to be the year where we start to engineer a great comeback for this country. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. Widespread downpours across Houston right now. Give it a couple of hours and a lot of this will be passing off towards the east. By the afternoon, it'll be clearing, not just the rain going away, but clouds should break up a little as well. With temperatures today topping out pretty close to 60 degrees. And in some spots, it's already around 60 degrees this morning. Much warmer feel out there. But again, the big story is the rain. Where these orange and red colors are is where the rain is heaviest. So the heaviest batch is reaching Houston right now. Notice behind it, you get towards Columbus, for example, is some scattered lighter showers. And that will be over Houston within the next two hours or so. So the rain may actually linger as late as maybe 9, even 10 a.m., but the heaviest stuff is probably just going to be in the next hour or hour and a half. Now, notice south of Houston is where the heaviest rain is, along with some lightning moving right into Angleton right now, and it looks like that's likely on track for Galveston. Something will of course, keep uh, continue to keep you updated on here throughout the morning with no wait weather and traffic. There is a big traffic impact, by the way, this morning as well. Wider view shows this big batch of rain coming on through another widespread soaker for us tied to the storm system, which is centered a little farther north. We got a lot of snow on the northern end of all that. That low is going to head towards the northeast with a rain snow mess for the weekend there. But there's already another low we're watching. It's just northwest of the northwestern U.S. This is the track it's going to take, and it brings rain and storms back our way Monday, and that one will also be another widespread round where most or all of our area will get rain out of it. Here's a look at future cast again. There's that low going away today. Here it is in the northeast by this weekend. Here's the next one coming in. Watch as that stirs up some rain and storms right here with a big round of snow in the central part of the country. And those storms on Monday, unlike what we've seen with these last few rounds, these may be stronger. And the Storm Prediction Center says there's a risk for severe storms here in our area on Monday. As far as we can tell on the timing, that's a during the day type of thing. Monday should be ending Monday evening. That timing can change, but that's how it looks right now. Again, widespread rain this morning. Everyone's getting it. We've got a nice weekend ahead, cool mornings, pleasant afternoons, storms on Monday, and then a windy cold front brings some cold air for Tuesday. All right, thank you so much, Adam. Well, now to this. One city is disposing Christmas trees by giving them out to animals at the zoo. Check this out. There was something different on the menu for the elephants and some of their fellow residents at the Berlin Zoo. Unsold Christmas trees, and that's a yum yum for them. It actually is given to the animals to mulch on, to play with instead of burning them or tossing them away. Zoo officials say they don't accept trees from the public as they could contain chemicals or leftover decorations, which is a no-no, could make them sick. So they rather get the treats from selected vendors instead. I love that. That's great. Recycling. Naturally. <laughs> well, here in the States, we also have animals that love to eat Christmas trees. I'm talking about the goats at Buttonhead Farms. They've been feasting on the Christmas tree delicacy for quite some time. And as Amelia Sack reports, these billy goats were definitely enjoying the bountiful, um, should I do it, banquet set before them. for farm animals. The four-legged folks up at Buttonhead Farms are enjoying a seasonal treat, Christmas trees. Buttonhead Farms owner Ashley Raspin says she learned about the repurposing method many years ago. Back in the day, an old-time farmer told us to always feed our, you know, old Christmas trees to the goats. It's a natural dewarmer. It's also filled with vitamins. Raspin says the trees provide enrichment for all of the animals during a slow season at the farm. We're going through our wintering season. In the warmer months, Buttonhead Farms hosts regular goat and pig yoga sessions at the farm and beyond. During the winter, those outdoor events come to a halt. 
leaving the animals with more free time on their hooves. It's slow. Normally these guys see, you know, thousands of people and then all of a sudden November hits and it's like a ghost town. So they kind of go through their change, just like us humans. We kind of go into that seasonal depression around this time. The trees help boost their spirits and keep them busy. Raspin says there are a few things to check for before you drop off your tree at the farm to make sure it's safe for the animals. Just make sure there's no tinsel or anything artificial. Sometimes you'll see Christmas trees that are overly sprayed. They'll be like a different color. They'll have like this green, bluish color. It means it's been sprayed too much. So trees like that are like a no-go for us. The animals up at Buttonhead will be sure to thank you. And the donkeys and the chickens and the pigs, they'll have a good goating great time with them. You can drop off your trees any day, any time here at Buttonhead Farms for the animals to enjoy. Okay, that was me, Lisa, reporting. And if your Christmas tree has a couple of branches left, this is how you can properly dispose it. Houston Solid Waste Management has 23 Christmas tree drop-off recycling locations open until Friday, January 26th. What you're seeing right now is a map with those locations available to recycle your tree. Remember, remove all the lights, the ornaments, and do not try to recycle flocked, artificial, or painted trees. They will not be accepted. It's almost Saturday, everyone. Todd Freed's going to give us a preview of what we can watch when it comes to H-Town High School Sports. Check it out. Good morning, everyone. I'm Todd Freed. Coming up tomorrow night on H-Town High School Sports. Hoops, here it is. The first hoops action of 2024. We'll head to Sugarland for undefeated Clements against Hightower, as well as Fort Bend Travis versus Rich Point. We're inclined to head to Klein for Klein Force versus Klein Collins. While in Cyprus, it's Cy Fair versus Cy Falls. Plus, out east, it's a big showdown between Atascacita and C.E. King. Also, we're off to Galveston for a special report on a kicker from the Ball High football team. He just doesn't miss. So don't miss out. H-Town High School Sports tomorrow night at 10 right here on CW39 Houston. Are you going to speak up? <laughs> Am I supposed to understand what you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Last Man Standing, tonight at 1 on CW39 Houston. Enroll in Trend Barber College today. Financial aid and VA benefits are available for those who qualify. Call the Southwest Campus at 713-721-0000. Call the North Campus at 281-440-8383. Trend Barber College is the home of the $5 haircut, where walk-ins are always welcome. Now through Wednesday, shop the Rooms to Go New Year's Sofa Sale. Hurry in to get big savings and endless sofa possibilities. Remember, every Rooms to Go sofa is on sale. Save on fabric sofas, sleeper sofas, plush leather sofas, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Every sofa you see is priced low to sell fast. And only Rooms to Go offers an opportunity like this. So shop the Rooms to Go New Year's Sofa Sale now through Wednesday. Every sofa is on sale. I'm attorney Sean Lalazari. And I'm attorney Shervin Lalazari. If you get hit by a big truck, don't trust the insurance company. Call us. We're the Law Brothers. These big companies have big insurance policies, but they'll do everything they can to pay you as little as possible. My brother and I will fight them to get you the big money that you deserve. Call us. We're the Law Brothers. Hurt by a big truck? Call 1-800-222-2222 or visit lawbrothers.com. have bones and these boneless wings are actually premium chicken tender bites tossed in one of Whataburger's famous sauces. I know what a real wing is. That is not a wing. Whataburger, what a wing. Just like you, what a wing. We know you care, but if this is all too real for you and your loved ones, make the call because we care too. Home instead. To us, it's personal. 
Enroll in Trend Barber College today. Financial aid and VA benefits are available for those who qualify. Call the Southwest Campus at 713-721-0000. Call the North Campus at 281-440-8383. Trend Barber College is the home of the $5 haircut, where walk-ins are always welcome. This portion of No Wait Weather and Traffic is brought to you by personal injury attorney Willie Powells. Willie wins. It's Furry Friday, so let's kick it off with this baby gorilla born in the Prague Zoo. Meet this little western lowland gorilla. Zookeepers are still debating on what they should name the baby. Actually, it's being held by its mother, so you can kind of see a little bit of fur. See that face? Oh, right by your arm. It's so cute. The curator of the apes at the zoo says the birth is a very important event. This species, which is native from Central America, has been endangered since 2007, but it looks like one more baby has now been born. So lovely. And now to this, firefighters in Italy made the impossible happen. They rescued a dog trapped inside of a well. Local firefighters say the dog had fallen down the well, so they used a specialized cave exploration technique to make the rescue happen. In the end, the pup was taken out of the well. You see right there? Oh, my goodness. And it was reunited with its owner. I know everybody, especially the dog, is like, yes, you rescued me. Thank you. Well, if you've played the original version of Tetris, raise your hand. Yeah, me too. You know how difficult it can really be. Well, check this out. A 13-year-old boy, he beat it. Watch. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh. I thought he was about to pass out. I would. The teen who goes by Blue uh, Scooty on social media. This video of his YouTube page shows it all. Shows him appearing to defeat the popular puzzle game. According to 404 Media, the record was previously held by an artificial intelligence bot. He beat AI, everyone. He also broke world records for overall score, level achieved, and total number of lines, according to the news publication. No word on if Nintendo is going to honor him or not. All I can say is we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Kudos to him. All right, completely switch gears. We got so many problems on the road, and Kerrigan's been busy following it all. Yeah, we have an accident along 249 at Greens Road. You can see that heavy rainfall coming down on our Houston Trans Star camera. Very stressful drive for many this morning as you're battling the traffic and the weather in place for us. We have two emergency vehicles on the scene here and that car off in your shoulder. They're closing down several lanes for the safety of everyone that is involved. 290s, uh, practically not seeing any green out there on their roadway. Expect a slower than normal drive for your entire commute. We do also have an incident that developed along um, 288 this morning. Let's get that box off our screen there so we can get a glimpse about what's happening on Airport Boulevard. Your right-hand shoulder is blocked because of that crash in the southbound lanes. You're watching CW39 Houston. No wait, weather and traffic.